Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger His family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of times Welcome to lesson number 173 of Tafsirul Jalalain Alhamdulillah, in our last lesson, we were able to complete verses 68 to 98 of Surah Maryam, which brought us to the end of that very beautiful, powerful, and noble Surah. So inshallah, today we are going to start with Surah Taha. Now, it has been called Surah Taha because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the Surah with these two letters which are considered to be from amongst Al-Huruf al the separated letters. And another title that has been given is Surah Kalim, because it contains a detailed account of Kalimullah, the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, who spoke directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhi narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 2,000 years before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth, He recited Surah Taha and Yasin to the angels. The angels said, Fortunate and blessed are the people to whom these two surahs will be revealed, and blessed are the chests which will preserve them, and blessed are the tongues that will recite them. And this is the surah that completely changed Umar radiallahu anhu. It was one of the apparent causes for his acceptance of the message of Islam. That initially, Umar radiallahu an had set out to kill the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That was his mission. That was his goal. He was upset. He was angry, and he made this determination that I am going to get rid of our quote unquote problem once and for all. But instead. After listening to the opening verses of Surah Taha, his heart was affected. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala softened his heart and led him towards accepting Islam. So according to the narration, that one day Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he set out with his sword right in his hand, fully determined to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one of the companions saw him and noticed that there was something off, that something's going on. So he asked him, you know, where are you going? What are you up to? And Umar radiallahu anh said that I am going to go and finish off the man who has divided the Quraysh, who has created the split in our community, who has vilified their faith and has taken them away from the belief and has belittled their idols. So he said, O oh, Umar, you're deceiving yourself. That if you kill Muhammad, do you really think that his clan is going to spare you? If you have any sense, take care of your own sister and her husband. Because they both have become Muslims and they have accepted the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And this shook Umar radiallahu anhu. He was shaken by what he just heard and he retraced his steps and made his way to his sister's home. And at that time, the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiallahu an, he was teaching them Surah Taha. Right, Surah Taha was written on some parchment, some sort of material, and he was teaching Umar radiallahu an sister and her husband um, the opening parts of Surah Taha. So when they saw and heard Umar radiallahu an approaching, Right, Khabab radiallahu an hid himself and Umar's sister, her name was Fatima radiallahu anha, she hid the material on which the Quran was written. But Umar radiallahu an overheard them. Right, he heard that they were reciting something and he asked, What was it? What was this that you were reciting just now? And his anger was building up, right? His temper was flaring, and eventually his temper got the best of him. And he physically assaulted both his brother-in-law and his sister. And according to some riwayat, you know, he struck his sister and it caused her to bleed. And 
when that happened, she said, you know, full of defiance, that all right, this is enough. Now you listen, you listen up and you will pay attention. That it is true that we have become Muslims and we have adopted the faith of Allah, meaning we have adopted the religion of Allah that He sent uh, to the Prophet ﷺ. So now do whatever you want, go ahead and do what you want. So Umar radiallahu an saw that he had hurt his sister and you know just like any human being he felt regret and remorse that how could I have done this to my sister I was angry I was upset so he felt bad he felt you know remorse and regret so he calmly then asked that oh at least show me what you were reading from All right show me these parchments show me this material that you're reading from so she said that you know what I'm not going to let you read it or touch it until you go in wash yourself up and purify yourself so he does so and then they showed him the parchments and he read the first few verses of surah Taha. and he remarked it is written in beautiful language and appears to be worthy of respect and then khabab radiallahu an came out and said ya umar ibn al-khattab that allah is very merciful and it's my belief that he has chosen you in response to the wish and the desire and the dua of the Prophet that I heard the Prophet making the following supplication yesterday that O oh Allah strengthen Islam through Abu al-Hakam ibn Hisham or Umar ibn al-Khattab so Umar radiallahu an this is your chance don't miss it so he goes and he meets the Prophet and he declares his shahada and he became a source of strength for that minority Muslim community. All right, so Surah Ta'a, it is the 20th chapter, the 20th Surah of the Quran, and it is made up of 135 verses. And similar to Surah Maryam, it is also a Makki Surah. Right? It's part of Meccan revelation, meaning it was revealed before the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu from Mecca to Medina. And it was revealed most likely in the fifth year of prophethood, shortly before the conversion of Umar radiallahu an. And at this time, the Muslim community was very, very small. And generally speaking, Meccan revelation, it deals with three fundamental aspects of our system of belief. And this is something now we have covered several times. So all of you who have been following along should now be familiar with these three major themes of Meccan revelation. The first being at tawheed the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second being al risala messengership, prophethood. And number three, Al-Qiyamah, the concept of life after death. So here, قال الإمام جلال الدين المحلي رحمه الله تعالى سورة طاها مكية مئة وخمس وثلاثون أو أر أو وأربعون أو ثنتان وثلاثون آية. He starts by saying سورة طاها. That this is سورة طاها مكية. It is مكية. It is revealed uh, before the migration of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from مكة to مدينة. And then he shows that there is a little bit of difference of opinion. Regarding the total number of verses in the surah, he says, "Mi'atun wa khamsun wa thalathun, 135," and that is perhaps the more common position, because that is how many verses we have uh, in our copies of the Quran, in the masahif that we recite from. There are 135 verses, or he says, "Aw wa arba'un," meaning 145. According to another count, there's 145 verses. And according to a third count, there's 132 verses. And again, this has nothing to do with the beginning or end of the surah. Rather, it has to do with the beginning and ending of certain ayat. So depending upon you know, where the scholars have determined the beginning and the ending of certain verses to be, there's a slight variation in the number. It's 135 or 145 or 132 verses. So let's recite the verses first and then we will get into the tafsir. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طه ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يعلم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى وهل أتاك حديث موسى إذ رأى نارا فقال لأهلهم كثوا إني آنست نارا لعلي آتيكم منها بقبس أو أجد على النار هدى فلما أتاها نودي يا موسى إني أنا ربك فاخلعن عليك إنك بالواد المقدس طوى قال الإمام جلال الدين المحلي رحمه الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طاها الله أعلم بمراده بذلك ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لتشقى لتتعب بما فعلت بعد نزوله من طول قيامك بصلاة الليل أي خفف عن نفسك إلا لكن أنزلناه تذكرة به لمن يخشى يخاف الله تنزيلا بدل من اللفظ بفعله الناصب له ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا جمع عليا ككبرى وكبر Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He starts the surah with two letters طَاهَا And this is a very powerful way of opening this particular chapter this particular surah of the Qur'an And there are several Suwar, there are several chapters of the Qur'an that begin in a similar fashion, in a similar way, with reciting letters separately. And these letters are called Al-Huruful Muqatta'ah, the separated letters. And they are considered to be a secret from the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one knows what they truly mean except for Allah. And they are... Um, brought at the beginning of these chapters of these surahs of the Qur'an to highlight the miraculous, inimitable nature of the Qur'an. And that is why Imam Al-Mahalli says, Allahu a'lamu bi muradihi bidhanik. Allah knows best what He means by that. Allah knows best what He means by these two letters. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى we have not revealed the Qur'an to you to cause you distress. Right? We have not revealed the Qur'an to you to cause you distress and worry. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ يَا مُحَمَّدُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. We have not revealed the Qur'an to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لِتَشْقَى To cause you distress. لِتَتْعَبَى so that you tire yourself and you wear yourself out بِمَا فَعَلْتَ بَعْدَ نُزُولِهِ with what you did after its revelation مِنْ طُولِ قِيَامِكَ بِصَلَاةِ اللَّيْنِ by standing for long periods of night for the night prayer right? مِنْ طُولِ قِيَامِكَ by lengthening your standing with the night prayer Initially, when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, started receiving revelation, he exerted a lot more energy and effort in ibadah, particularly Salatul Layl. That he would spend long, long, long portions of the night standing in salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, That is not the reason why we have revealed the Quran upon you. 
We did not reveal the Qur'an to put you in a difficult situation, to put you through hardship and difficulty and struggle. We didn't do it to cause you distress or to cause you to tie yourself out and wear yourself out. A, eh? And he says the meaning of this is خَفِّفْ عَنْ نَفْسِكَ that lighten your burden upon yourself. That don't do these extra, unnecessary, voluntary acts of worship that are going to cause you distress, that are going to wear you out, that are going to tire you out because that's not what is required of you and that is not why the Qur'an has been revealed to you. Why has the Qur'an been revealed? إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى but as a reminder for those who hold Allah in awe. As a reminder for those who fear Allah. So, illa lakin anzalnah. However, we have revealed it, the Quran, tadkiratan. As a reminder, bihi. Right? As a reminder, right? Using the Quran as a reminder, liman yakhsha. For the one who fears. يَخَافُ اللَّهَ For the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala تَنزِيلًا مِمَّنْ خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ الْعُلَى A revelation from the one who created the earth and the high heavens. He says تَنزِيلٌ is بَدَلٌ مِنَ اللَّفْضِ بِفَعْلِهِ النَّاصِبِ لَهُ That grammatically speaking the word تَنزِيلًا here is playing the role of بَدَل Right, it's playing the role of badal, meaning it's like a substitute, a replacement. Min al-lafli, right, bifa'lihi, from the from the word of its verb that's making it mansub, and he anzalna, right, ma anzalna alayk al-Qur'ana li tashqa illa tadkira li ma yaxsha tanzilan. So this word here, tanzilan, grammatically speaking, according to Imam al-Mahalli, is a badal. It is the substitute, it is the replacement for the word anzalna. So it is a revelation from whom? Mimman khalaq al ard From the one who created the earth, was samawatil ula, and the high heavens. And he says the word ula, linguistically, is the plural of the word ulya, just like the word kubra is the plural of the word kubar. Qala rahimahullah. Huwa ar-Rahmanu right. Huwa ar-Rahmanu Ala al-Arshi Wa huwa fi al-Lughati Sarir al-Mulk Istawa Istiwa'an yaliqu bihi Lahu ma fi al-Samawati Wa ma fi al-Ardi Wa ma baynahuma min al-Makhluqati Wa ma tahta al-Thara Huwa al-Turab al-Nadiy Wa al الأرضون السبع لأنها تحته وإن تجهر بالقول في ذكر أو دعاء فالله غني عن الجهر به فإنه يعلم السر وأخفى من أي ما حدثت به النفس وما خطر ولم تحدث به فلا تجهد نفسك بالجهر الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى التسعة والتسعون الوارد بها الحديث والحسن مؤنث الأحسن. So Allah subhanahu wa taala then continues describing who He is, right? The one who created the earth and the high heavens. Who is He? Ar-Rahman, the Most Merciful. على العرش استوى, who established Himself on the throne, established on the throne. So here Imam al-Mahalli says huwa, meaning the one who revealed the Qur'an as a reminder for those who fear him. And the one who created the earth and the high heavens is Ar-Rahman. He is the most merciful. Ala al-Arsh. And he highlights what is al-Arsh. He says, wa huwa fil lughati sarir al-mulk. Linguistically speaking, it is the chair of the kingdom, of the dominion, of kingship. And that's why we translate it as throne. Istawa. Istawa, he established himself upon the throne. 
And then he highlights a very important theological point saying istiwa an yadiqubi and establishing that is befitting to him befitting to his majesty because laysa kamithlihi shay nothing resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way shape or form Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond the boundaries of space and time he's beyond beyond any limitations and limits he's not bound by space or time so when it says istawa ala al-arsh and he established himself on the throne in a manner that is befitting to his majesty lahu ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa ma baynahuma wa ma tahta thara to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth and whatever is in between and whatever is underground so lahu ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا and whatever is in between them وَمَا تَحْتَ الثَّرَى and whatever is beneath the soil لَهُ belongs to him and him alone Allah alone is Al-Malik Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner, the sovereign, the king of every single thing in this universe of the universe and every single thing it contains highlighting the majesty and the grandeur and the you know absolute authority and ownership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا whatever is in between them مِنَ الْمَخْلُقَاتِ in terms of created things وَمَا تَحْتَ الثَّرَى and whatever is uh, underground whatever is beneath the soil هُوَ التُرَابُ النَّدِيُّ right, التُرَابُ النَّدِيُّ is like this uh, wet soil so it's referring to that والمراد and what is meant uh, what is beneath the soil is الْأَرْضُونَ السَّبْعُ right, the seven earths لِأَنَّهَا تَحْتَهُ because it's beneath uh, الثَّرَى وَإِن تَجْهَرْ بِالْقَوْلِ فَإِنَّهُ يَعْنَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى and whatever you may say aloud he knows what you keep secret and what is even more hidden whether you speak openly out loud he certainly knows what is secret and what is even more hidden so what in tajahar bin qawl right if you speak out loud right if you speak out loud fi dhikrin aw du'a'in when remembering him, right? When remembering him or supplicate, supplication, فَاللَّهُ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْجَهْرِبِ Then Allah is free of you having to say it out loud. Allah is independent. Allah has no need for you to say it out loud. Why? فَإِنَّهُ يَعْنَمُ السِّرْ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is secret. وَأَخْفَى And what is even more hidden than the secret. Eh? مَا حَدَّثْتَ بِهِ النَّفْسِ right, What you say to yourself internally, Allah knows. وَمَا خَطَرَ وَلَمْ تُحَدِّثْ بِهِ And even the thoughts that cross your mind and you don't even uh, you know, uh, vocalize them internally. I don't know how you express that, but you don't even like the thoughts that you uh, perhaps you know, consider and even the thoughts that cross your mind. Allah knows all of that. فَلَا تُجْهِدْ نَفْسَكَ بِالْجَهْلِ So don't tire yourself out by uh, saying it out loud and, and being you know, extra loud unnecessarily. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows every single thing and hears every single thing. He does not need uh, for your dua or your dhikr uh, to be out loud. Right. Allahu la ilaha illa hu لَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Allah There is no God except Him The most excellent names belong to Him He has the most beautiful, the most excellent names So Allah لَفْظُ الْجَلَالَ The proper noun for the divine being Allah لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ There is no ilah there is no being worthy of worship 
There is no God illa huwa, except Him. له الأسماء الحسنى The most beautiful names, the most excellent names belong to Him. التسعة والتسعون الوارد بها الحديث The 99 names that are mentioned in the hadith. والحسنى And he says grammatically uh, speaking the word الحسنى is the feminine of the word الأحسن which is اسم التفضيل الأحسن the best الأحسن is the مذكر it is the masculine form of the word and الحسنى is the مؤنث it is the feminine form of the word قال رحمه الله وهل قد أتاك حديث موسى إذ رأى نارا فقال لأهله لامرأته أمكثوا هنا وذلك في مسيره من مدين طالبا مصر إني آنست أبصرت نارا لعلي آتيكم منها بقبس شعلة في رأس فتيلة أو عود أو أجد على النار هدى أي هاديا يدلني على الطريق وكان أخطأها لظلمة الليل وقال لعل لعدم الجزم بوفاء الوعد Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the long narrative of Musa alayhi salam. And the majority of Surah Taha revolves around the story of Musa alayhi salam. Right? A lot of details from his story. Both before he became a prophet and also after he became a prophet. وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Has the story of Musa alayhi salam come to you? Or has the story of Musa alayhi salam come to you? And here he says, this is a rhetorical question, but in reality it's a statement. قَدْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى That the story, the narrative of Musa alayhi salam has already come to you. إِذْ رَأَى نَارًا فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِهِمْ كُثُوا إِنِّي آنَسْتُ نَارًا لَعَلِّي آتِيكُمْ مِنْهَا بِقَبَسٍ أَوْ أَجِدُ عَلَى النَّارِ هُدَى When he saw a fire, he said to his family, Wait here, I have spotted a fire. Perhaps I can bring you a torch from it. I can bring you a flaming brand from it. Or find some guidance at the fire. So, إِذْ رَأَى نَارًا إِذْ رَأَى نَارًا When he saw a fire. فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِهِ So he said to his family, لِمْرَأَتِهِ He said to his wife, أُمْكُثُوا هُنَا Stay here. وَذَلِكَ فِي مَسِيرِهِ مِنْ مَدْيَنَ طَالِبًا مِصْرًا And that was on his travel from Madian going towards Egypt. That he was on his way back from Madian and he was going back to Egypt. So this is when this incident took place. وَذَلِكَ يعني When he saw this fire and he told his wife, you wait here and stay here. That was on his journey from Madian seeking out Misr. إِنِّي آنَسْتُ أَبْصَرْتُ نَارًا I have seen a fire. لَعَلِّي آتِيكُمْ مِنْهَا بِقَبْسٍ Perhaps I will bring a, a, a brand, a flaming brand from it. شُعْلَةٍ right? like, a, like a flame. فِي رَأْسِ فَتِيلَةٍ Right, at the top of a torch, or you know, top of a, a piece of wood. Right, I will bring back some light so that we can use it to warm ourselves up. I, mean, I can bring back some fire so we can at least warm ourselves up. Or I might find some guidance there. A hadian, meaning a guide. Who will direct me towards the right way? Why? وَكَانَ أَخْطَأَهَا Because they had got lost. He had got lost لِظُلْمَةِ الليل Because of the darkness of the night. So according to the riwayat on his way back from Madian, uh, Musa alayhi salam, it was dark, it was cold, they got lost, uh, they needed fire, they needed directions. So he saw this fire in the distance and he says, let me go there so that I can at least, you know, bring back some fire with me that we can use to stay warm. Or maybe I might find someone there who can guide us. Uh, and show us the correct directions. And the reason why uh, Musa السلام, said لعلي, and he uses the word الجزمي, because he did not have certainty of fulfilling that promise. 
which was, you know, that he didn't know that if he would be able to bring fire back for sure, or if he would find the guy. So he says, La Ali, perhaps if I go there, you know, wait here for me if I go there, maybe I might be able to bring back some fire to keep us warm, or I might find someone there who will at least give us the right directions. قَالَ رَحِمُ اللَّهِ فَلَمَّا أَتَاهَا وَهِيَ شَجَرَةُ عُوسَجْ نُودِيَ يَا مُوسَى إِنِّي بِكَسْرِ الْهَمْزَةِ بِتَأْوِيلِ نُودِيَ بِقِيلَ وَبِفَتْحِهَا بِتَقْدِيرِ الْبَا أَنَا تَأْكِيدٌ لِيَاءِ الْمُتَكَلِّمِ رَبُّكَ فَخْلَعْنَا عَلَيْكِ إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ الْمُطَهَّرِ الْمُبَارَكِ طُوًا بَدَلٌ أَوْ عَطْفُ بَيَانٍ بالتنوين وتركه مصروف باعتبار المكان وغير مصروف للتأنيث باعتبار البقعة مع العلمية وأنا اخترتك من قومك فاستمع لما يوحى إليك مني إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدني وأقم الصلاة لذكري فيها إن الساعة آتية أكاد أخفيها على الناس ويظهر لهم قربها بعلاماتها لتجزى فيها كل نفس بما تسعى به من خير وشر فلا يصدنك يصرفنك عنها أي عن الإيمان بها من لا يؤمن بها واتبع هواه في إنكارها فتردى فتهلك إن صددت عنها Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what happened when he approached the fire that he saw in the distance فلما أتاها نودي يا موسى and when he reached it, when he came to the fire, Nudia, he was called, he was summoned, O Musa. So, Falamma Ataha, when he came to it, meaning when he came to the fire, Wahiya Shajaratu Ausaj, and it was the tree of Ausaj, which is like a cactus, a tree that's full of thorns. Nudia, he was called, he was summoned, Ya Musa, O Musa. إِنِّي أَنَا رَبُّكَ فَخْلَعْنَا عَلَيْكَ إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى He said, it is truly I, I am your Lord. So take off your sandals, for you are in the sacred valley of طُوَى. So, إِنِّي بِكَسْرِ الْهَمْزَةِ إِنِّي has a kasra on the hamza, بِتَأْوِيلِ نُودِيَ Because of نُودِيَ بِقِيلَ Because نُودِيَ can also be uh, understood to mean qila and whenever you have qala or its derivatives and you have the harf al-tawkeel inna it will always have a kasra right? when you have qala or any of its derivatives if you have the harf al the this tawkeel here this particle that gives emphasis there will be inna with a kasra and the hamza wa bi fathiha and it can also be anni with a fatha and the hamza bi taqdeer al ba yani bi anni نودي يا موسى بأني أنا تأكيد لياء المتكلم right. Truly I am your Lord And we covered before that when you repeat pronouns Or when you repeat words it gives emphasis So you have ياء المتكلم right. You have the pronoun for the first person Then you have أنا A detached pronoun for the first person So it's providing emphasis Truly I am ربك Truly I am your Lord فَخْلَعْنَ عَلَيْكَ So take off your sandals. إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ Because you are in the sacred valley. المطهر, the purified, sacred. أو المبارك, or the blessed valley of طُوَى And he says the word طُوَان is بَدَن. Right, it's a, grammatically speaking, it's a بَدَن of uh, الْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ or عَطْفُ بَيَان It's a عَطْف of explanation, clarification. And طُوَان he says bit tanween, it can have a tanween, وَتَرْكِهِ or tuwa without a tanween. So if there's a tanween, it's masruf, yani it gets tanween, bi'tibad al makan because it's a place, and it could be recited without the tanween because it will be ghair munsarif, it will be considered a diptote because lit yani it's mu'annath, it's feminine, bi'tibad al buqa because it's a piece of land, ma'al alamiyya and it's a proper noun. And these are two factors that will cause a word to be غير منصرف in the Arabic language. So for those of you who are familiar with علم النحوي with uh, syntax and grammar, uh, this should be ringing bells in your mind about أسباب منع الصرف 
the factors that are found in a word that cause it to be غير منصرف that cause it to be uh, what we call in English a diptote meaning a word that doesn't get tanween nor does it get a kasra so saying here if it's no tanween here then that means the word tuwa is غير منصرف it's al mamnu' min as sarf why because of at ta'neeth ma'al alamiyah because it's feminine and it's a proper noun and if you say that there is a tanween then it's not غير منصرف it's not mamnu' min as sarf because it's a place wa an akhtartuka fastami' lima yuha I have chosen you, so listen to what is being revealed. I have chosen you from your nation. So listen carefully to what is going to be revealed to you from me. Right. It is truly I, I am Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except me. So worship me alone and establish prayer for my remembrance. Innani an Allah. Truly I am Allah. La ilaha illa ana. There is no ilah except for I. Fa'budni. So worship me alone. Wa aqimi salata li dhikri and establish prayer for my remembrance. Fiha in it. Inna sa'ata atiyatun akadu ukhfiha li tujza kullu nafsim bima tas'a. The hour is sure to come. My will is to keep it hidden so that every soul may be rewarded according to their efforts. The hour is coming, though I choose to keep it hidden for each soul to be rewarded for its labor. So, inna sa'ata atiya. Truly, the hour is coming. Akadu ukhfiha. Though I choose to keep it hidden. Anin nasi from people. Wa yadhharu lahum qurbuha bi'alamatiha. And its nearness through its signs will become apparent for them. فِيهَا So that I can reward on that day, right? On the كُلُّ uh, in every soul بِمَا تَسْعَى With what it has done. بِهِ مِنْ خَيْرٍ وَشَدٍ Good and bad. فَلَا يَصُدَّنَّكَ عَنْهَا مَنْ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِهَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ فَتَرْبَى So don't let those who disbelieve in it and follow their desires distract you from it or you will be doomed don't let anyone who does not believe in it and follows his own desires distract you from it also and bring to you ruin right. the one who does not believe in the hour should not turn you away from it meaning believing in it not only do they not believe in it, but they follow their desires fi in kariha in rejecting it. Fatarda, and then you will be destroyed. Fatahlika in sadatta anha, and if fatahlika, you will be destroyed if you uh, turn away from it. So I am out of time for today, and we will stop here. Inshallah, we have reached till the end of verse number sixteen. So in our next lesson, we will pick up with verse number seventeen. May Allah accept this from us and place it on our scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Qur'an a proof for us, not a proof against us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to not only recite the Qur'an, but try our best to understand it and most importantly, um, act upon it. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا وَمَوْلَانَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلِّمْ جَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ